Hi, welcome back to another coding tutorial. And in this video, we'll be making this animation that involves colors and circles and some movement, and it gives out this optical illusion vibe. So if you're interested, let's get started. First of all, let's talk about how we want to approach this. We're gonna approach this in three digestible steps. First, we're gonna draw the circles, then we're gonna move the circles, and then we're going to put in some colors. So let's talk about how to draw the circles. So what you see in the screen right now, there are a total of 12 circles, and these circles are the same distance away from the center of the center point, basically. And each of the circles are evenly spaced, meaning that the angles between each of them is the same. Okay, so instead of drawing 12 circles, I'm going to start by creating just one. And I'm going to do that by creating a class called circle. And you can do that by doing this, create file. I'm going to name the class circle.js. And before I write a class, I'm going to link it in our index.html file. All you have to do is scroll down here and um, copy this line. Then change the name to circle.js or whatever name you use to name your file. Okay, let's go back to this. Now let's write a class circle. So the class is called circle and in the constructor function, I'm going to create two variables to start with. The first one will be the radius, and this radius is basically the distance between the center point and each of the circles. And I'm going to give it a fixed value of 100. I'm also going to create a variable called angle and give it a fixed value of 0. The two methods that I'm going to write are going to be update and display. In the update function is where we are going to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates and I make the whole video about how to do that so if you want to review or you want to learn more you can check that video out but basically what we need is two equations x equals to r times cosine of angle and also y equals to r times sine of angle. And the reason that I have to put this dot in all of this is because we are writing a class right now. Okay, and then in display, I'm gonna write two functions. The first one is I'm gonna draw the circle, right? And the circle is gonna be at the location x and y and of a specific size. So let's give it a new variable as well. What about um, 50 to begin with? And then I'm also going to draw um, a line so that it's easier for us to visualize. And the line will be going from the center, the center point, right, to the center of the circle, which is at this dot x and this dot y. Let's go back to sketch.js. And what we want to do here is that we want to start by creating just one circle. I'm going to name it C. C is going to be a new circle. And then we're going to call the function update and the function display. And then just run it. Okay, so we didn't make any errors. But right now the circle is at the top of the screen, right? The top left of the screen here, we have the line that we drew and then we have the circle of the size 50. Let's move it to the center of the screen by using the translate function. We're gonna move it by width divided by two and height divided it by two. Okay, so now it's at the center of the circle. So now that we created one circle and there are no errors, let's start making multiple circles. 
So instead of creating a variable C, I'm going to create an array. I'm going to name it circles. Okay, let's delete all the C stuff first. I'm going to create another variable called count. And count is going to be the number of circles that I want to make. Instead of making 12 to start with, I'm going to start with 3 so that it's smaller, easier to, to work with. Then I'm going to write a for loop. And I'm going to loop through the number of circles that I want to make. And then I'm going to populate the array circles with new circle objects. And then in the draw function, I'm going to do the same by writing a for loop. Then this for loop is going to what? I'm going to call an update function and then call the display function. Why do we only see one circle right now? The reason is because let's go back to the circle.js page. We have put a fixed angle location at angle equals to zero, right? So we're going to change that and we're going to give that as a parameter here. Okay, so now we need to calculate what angle should be between each of the circles, right? Like I said initially, the spacing between each circle is going to be the same, meaning that the angle is the same. However, the location from the starting point of each of the circles will be different. We can do that by first creating an array called angles. And then we will calculate what those angles should be. And it's going to be depending on the number of circles that we're going to make right? And that angle in between each of the circles will be calculated using 2 pi divided by count, right? Because 2 pi is the whole circle, right? 360 degrees divided by the number of circles that we want to make. And to get the exact location of where each of the circles should be, we need to multiply this equation by i. Okay, so now once we have the location of the angles for each of the circles, then we put that, we pass that in as an argument for our object. There you go. So now we have three circles of the size 50 that are evenly spaced and also at the same distance away from the center point. So what if we change from 3 to 12? and we get exactly what we hope for. Let's go back to circle and make this size a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it to 100. Okay, so we finished with the first step of drawing the circles. Now let's move the circles. How do we move the circle? So we move the circle by changing the distance between each of the circles and the center point, right? And that distance is what? That distance is this, this dot r. So um, we can just do that by writing this dot r equals to this dot r minus 1, right? We want to decrement this dot r by one pixel at a time. OK, so it's kind of working. The circle moves in, inward. But then now it kind of just like move off the screen. What we want it to be is that we want it to move inward and then change the direction. Once the distance between the circle and the center of the page is at a specific value, right? We want it to move out. So we can do that by creating a conditional statement. So first, I'm going to create a variable called direction and I'm going to set that direction to negative one. So I want it to start moving inwards. That's fine. And this is going to be this dot r plus this dot direction. And then the conditional statement that I'm talking about, what we're going to write is that we're going to write this. No, if this dot r is less than zero, 
So once the center of the circle is the same distance as, is the same location as the center of the page, or if this dot r is more than, let's say, 100, what we wanted to do is that we want the direction to change to the opposite direction. And we can do that by multiply the direction with negative 1. Okay, so now we finished with the second step. So let's comment out the line here. There you go. So in the third step, what we need to do is to put in some colors. And we can do that um, by first creating a variable called C. And C is going to be passed in as an argument. Then we are going to use this this dot c to color our circles. And what kind of colors are we going to be putting here? The colors that we're going to be putting in here are going to be three colors. They're going to be red, green, and blue. So every third circle, every every third circle is going to have the same color, meaning that the first and the fourth circle will have the same color and the second and the fifth will have the same color, and so on. So now we go back to our sketch, and um, we're going to create an array called colors. And colors will be, will have three values, right? Like I said before, it will be the color red, and it will be the color green. And last but not least, it will be the color blue. OK, so now we need to put in the second argument, right, which is color. How are we going to do that? We want to be able to put in the same color every three circle. And we can do that by using the modula, the mod, the modula. I think that's how you pronounce it. The mod um, sign. So what we do is we do i. Um, this is the the percent sign is the mod sign and then three. Basically, this will evaluate to a value of zero, one, or two. What how it's being calculated is what is the remainder when i is divided by three. For example. So if count is equals to 4, 4 mod 3 is what 3 can go into 4 one time and then have one remainder. So um, this will be evaluated to 1. OK, so now let's click play. Uh, oh, and then I have to put in colors here. There you go. So we have three colors red, green, and blue. And then the very last thing, which is the main trick of how to create those multiple colors and the optical vibe, what you need to do is you need to use a built-in function called blend mode. And the mode that we want to use is called difference. OK, so right now is where I'm going to be warning you that it's going to be flashing a little bit. So if you're sensitive to that, please close your eyes or fast forward maybe 10 seconds from now. There you go. OK, so it's flashing a lot right now because we forget two functions that we need to put in. And those two functions that we need to put in is the function call push and the function call pop. By putting push and pop, it saves the mode that we put in, which is the blend mode of difference, and then it restores to the normal mode. It eliminates those flashing images. And there you go. So you can still play around with a bunch of things, right? You can change the number of the circles that you want to draw. You can change 
the size of the circles, you can change the speed at which it's moving, or you can even change the size of the circles relative to the direction as well. Many things you can play around, but I think this alone makes a pretty cool animation already. That's it for this video. If you like it, please be sure to subscribe and let me know what else you want to see. See you next time. Bye.